Rev up your engines! Every Thursday, I'm going to answer one of the viewer's questions and make an entire video on that question. Glenny asks, what do you think about boxer engines? Well, I know quite a bit about them. To begin with, Carl Benz, the Mercedes-Benz guy, he invented the first boxer engine that was a two-cylinder gasoline internal combustion engine with pistons on opposite sides that are vertical and went back and forth. They're horizontally opposed engines. They have a single crank in the middle, then on either side, the pistons go back and forth. They can have two pistons, they can have four pistons, they can have six, you can add any amount you want. But they're called boxer because they think I like boxers with boxing gloves, that was their idea. Carl invented that way back in 1896, and in the early 1900s, even Henry Ford was thinking about putting a two-cylinder boxer engine in his model cars, but they never really put any in production. He went for a straight four-cylinder engine instead. Now a big advantage of boxer engines are, as long as they have the same number of cylinders on each side, they are naturally balanced engines. They do not have unbalanced forces inside. Now they do have a tendency of being noisy engines. Oh, look at the Porsches, they're kind of noisy. The old Volkswagen Beetles are kind of noisy. The old Subarus, they're kind of noisy too. But since the cylinders are opposed to each other, and flat, not V or anything, they take up less space. So you can put them low down and make a car that handles a lot better and doesn't have problems with rolling over like a higher engine is. The center of gravity is a big deal. That's why they use them in motorcycles too, like the BMW motorcycles. When you have a big engine that's down low, the center of gravity is lower, and that's a big deal in a motorcycle because you don't want to be high up in the air and tip over. You want most of the weight to be lower. And since these boxer engines are naturally balanced, they use them in a lot of light planes. Any unbalances are a bad thing. Sure, they're smaller engines, you don't see them in giant planes anymore, but in the little engines they have them because they're going real fast, they don't want an engine that's going to shake itself apart, so they're a good fit there. Now in the car world, boxer engines have been always kind of an oddball engine, in oddball cars. The Chevy Corvair is used, the six-cylinder one. The Volkswagen Beetles used the original Beetles anyways, not the new ones. The original one used air-cooled four-cylinder boxer engines. And the main ones that we think of today are Porsches and Subarus. Subarus have used them, that's all they really use. And even the new Toyota, which is basically a Subaru that just rebadged, their little sports car has the boxer engine in it. So the boxer engine is kind of a fringe engine that has been used, but was never really accepted in the general population of car buyers. Because especially today, this is an old design. I mean, Carl Benz was messing around with that stuff in 1896. Metallurgy and engine design have long passed the boxer engines through. As an example, I recently road tested one of those new Toyota sports cars, which is basically a rebadged Subaru. And although it handled nice and it was kind of fun to drive, I was really disappointed at the power. It really didn't have much power at all. Heck, my wife's old Matrix there would run circles around it. It's got a much faster engine in it. Now, I was driving a naturally aspirated one. It didn't have a turbocharger or a supercharger. You can make them faster, but really, you can't make them as fast as the modern engine designs, which have way passed the boxer design by. I mean, if you do a little research, a long time ago, Porsche was thinking about retiring their 911s, their six-cylinder boxer engines, because they saw it as an antique design in Germany, but the Americans were just in love with the six-cylinder boxer 911, so they continued to make it because they kept buying them. Now, if you maintain a boxer engine, you're going to last quite some time. They do often have head gasket problems as they age. That's just the natural thing of having the cylinder block in the middle and then having one head on one side and one head on the other and the airflow characteristics and stuff. A lot of them just had a tendency as they age to blow head gaskets. And yes, a lot of that is actually due to the drivers. They either over rev them or they don't maintain them correctly or they put on a turbocharger or a supercharger to get as much horsepower as they can and they just overload the engines and then they blow. Now, if you're not that into getting a ton of horsepower out of them, hey, those French crazy 2CV little tiny cars, they have a two-cylinder boxer engine in them. They can hardly get out of their own way, but the French love them and here in the United States, they're having kind of a renaissance. The hipsters want to drive around that live in the city because it's a cool, unique thing. So even that kind of fits 
person with the boxer engine sentimentality. It's kind of a niche thing for a niche market. And really, they have kind of been tied in with failed cars. The Corvair had them, they're a massive failure. The Tucker, that crazy Tucker guy, his was a six cylinder air cooled boxer engine. So it's kind of tied in with some failed stuff because, as far as I'm concerned, Hey, when Carl made them in 1896, that was cutting edge technology, but hey, this is 2018 now, you know? Times have really passed the boxer engine design for most intents and purposes. Because look at the air-cooled Volkswagen Beetle, the original Beetle. They sold millions and millions of them, but even Volkswagen gave up with that design and went to a straight four-cylinder water-cooled engine design. It's kind of a design of the past, but if you like boxer engines and you don't want all that much horsepower, you like the noise that they make because they are very mechanically sounding, a oh, boxer engine might be for you. And since this is the Thursday segment where I answer a viewer's question, place your own question on the YouTube comments below and I'll pick the best ones to make a single video to answer your questions. And where else can you find a guy with 50 years experience of fixing cars to answer your own question with a video? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.